I'd like to welcome each one of you to our devotional study today. We are in the tail end of Luke chapter 17, and uh, the tail end of this chapter is a chapter that is prophetic in nature, and uh, we will be dealing with some of that today. And uh, I also encourage you, if you want to know more about our study in, in prophecy, that you can go to our YouTube page, and there you will find a playlist on the book of Revelation. Uh, as we took considerable time to go through that book, and then uh, so there's a good study for you and for any verses that you would desire to look into further. And uh, also in follow-up to that, I have written three books on Revelation, which are available as well through our website, dannyjack.ca. The first two are published. The third one will be published and available shortly. So those are available as well if you're looking at the subject of prophecy. Uh, today we want to look at Revela or Luke chapter 17, I'm sorry, and verses 31 through 37, where it says, In that day, he which shall be upon the housetop, and his stuff in the house, let him not come down to take it away. And he that is in the field, let him likewise not return back. Remember Lot's wife. Whosoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it, and whosoever shall lose his life shall preserve it. I tell you, in that night there shall be two men in one bag, the one shall be taken and the other left. Two women shall be grinding in the mill, the one shall be taken and the other left. Two men shall be in the field, the one shall be taken and the other left. And they answered and said unto him, Where, Lord? And he said unto them, Whithersoever, or wheresoever the body is, thither will the eagles be gathered together. So as we come into these verses today, um, we see here that uh, the general teaching uh, of the word of God is that God's people, those who have been saved, those who have placed their personal faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, that they will be raptured out of this world before the tribulation. Uh, just in the same way that Noah was was uh, delivered uh, and taken out uh, of God uh, of and protected from the world before the judgment of God fell, and Lot was taken out of Sodom before the judgment of God fell on Sodom, and we saw those examples back in verses uh, 22 through uh, 27. And as, and as we've been looking at those, um, we see here that the example is that uh, we will be taken out of this world before the judgment of God falls upon this world. And as we look at God talking about the judgment that's going to come upon this world, there's, there's a couple of, of things that we see here. That reminds us, first of all, we, we are reminding of the simple truth that when the judgment of God comes, it will come very quickly on this world. The Bible makes it very clear that the rapture of the saints is going to happen uh, in, a, in a twinkling of an eye. And uh, that is, you know, a very quick period of time. And, and the simple truth that, uh, you know, if you're saved when that time happens, you're going home. But if you're not saved, you're going to be left here on this earth to go through the tribulation period. And that coming is going to be so sudden that you're not going to have any time to make any alterations. You're not going to have time to make a choice once the rapture of the saints happens. And uh, we see that kind of pictured for us when it says in that day, uh, he which shall be upon the house top and his stuff in the house, let him not come down to take it away. And he that is in the field, let him uh, likewise not return back. Remember Lot's wife. Whosoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it, and whosoever shall lose his life shall preserve it. So we see as we come into these verses that the Bible reminds us the rapture of the saints is going to be very sudden. God's judgment coming upon this world is going to be sudden. And also as you study through Revelation chapter 6 through 19, you will also find that the judgment of God that is coming on this earth is not only sudden judgment, but it will be severe judgment. And uh, friend, I encourage you today in this day of grace, when it is easy to be saved, that if you're not saved, that you would turn from your sin and that you would turn to the Lord Jesus Christ for salvation. Friends, the Bible makes it very clear that for those who have heard following the rapture of the saints, there will be a strong delusion sent by God and that people will believe the lie of the Antichrist. The only people that are saved during the tribulation period are those who never had an opportunity to hear the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ before the rapture of the saints. Beyond that, if you won't get saved today when it's easy, you will not get saved in the tribulation period when it's hard. 
oh, it'll be just as easy to get saved. But what I mean by that, the results of people getting saved are going to mean your life. The Antichrist is going to hunt down people that trust in Christ and he is going to kill them. So we see here that he makes it very clear that we need to be prepared for that day. And then he says also that it will be a time of separation. He says, I tell you, in that night there shall be two and one big, the one shall be taken and the other left. Two women shall be grinding in the mill, the one shall be taken and the other left. Two men shall be in the field, the one shall be taken and the other left. So as we look at these verses, it's reminding us that the rapture of the saints is going to be a time of, of separation. Those who know Christ will go home to be with the Lord. Those who do not know him will be left behind. Husbands will be separated from wives. Wives will be separated from husbands. Parents will be separated from their children. Children will be separated from their parents. Friends will be separated from friends. All because one knew the Lord and one did not know the Lord. And it will be a time of separation. So we see from the teaching of Scripture that the God's people will be raptured out of this world before the tribulation takes place. We've been saved from wrath. We've not been appointed to wrath. The Lord Jesus Christ took our wrath upon him. Praise God for that. However, let me say this. That does not mean that saints will not have tribulation. Just because we're not going through the great tribulation does not mean that we will not go through tribulation. Does not mean that we will not face persecution. There have been many people in our world that have gone through tribulation. There have been many people in our world that have faced persecution. There have been many in our world that have even faced martyrdom. Let me remind you of what the Bible tells us. The Bible makes it very clear that while we are in the world, we will face, we will suffer tribulation. In John chapter 16, and in verse 33, it says, These things have I spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. Praise God for the child of God in the, in the Lord Jesus Christ. There is peace. These things have I spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation. Obviously, he didn't say you could have. He did not say you might have. He said, in the world ye shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Christian, do not be surprised when you face tribulation. Do not be surprised if persecution comes our way in North America. The Bible does not say that we're exempt from that. It says that we will be taken out before the great tribulation happens in this world. As a matter of fact, it says there in that verse that in the world ye shall have tribulation. In 2 Timothy 3 and verse 12, it says, Yea, and all that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. So the bottom line is, if you're not suffering even a little bit of ridicule, then you need to ask yourself the question, am I living a godly life? Because all that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. We will face ridicule. We will face mocking. We will face tribulation. We can even face persecution. But we will not face the judgment of God in the tribulation period. Christ has faced our judgment on uh, on our behalf, he's taken that judgment. Then it says in verse 37, And they answered and said unto him, Where, Lord? And he said unto them, Wheresoever the body is, thither the eagles will be gathered together. You say, what in the world is Jesus talking about in that verse? Here's what Jesus is saying. He's saying, wherever corruption is found, that is where the judgment of God will fall. And friends, that ought to make us stop and think about the world that we live in today. Because certainly, as you look at Canada, and as you look at the United States of America, there is no question that corruption is on the increase, not only amongst the people, but friends, corruption is severely on the increase, even in our governments today. And as a, as a child of God, friend, that ought to motivate you to prayer. That ought to motivate you to holy living. That ought to motivate you to stand up for what is right. Because corruption is in our land and we deserve the judgment of God. And we are beginning to see the judgment of God. But friends, we've not even seen the beginning of what could happen because of God's judgment. Because of the corruption that is in our land. May it be our desire to live according to Second Chronicles seven fourteen. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Have a great day.